Hi, my name is Justin Jefferson, the fine young gentleman. We have Raphael Schneider here from the Gentleman's Gazette. Hi there. We're at the headquarters of the Art of Charm here in Los Angeles, and we're going to talk today about men's style, and uh, in particular Raphael's views on men's style, and his, uh, his activities with the Gentleman's Gazette. That's right. It's going to be great. Um, so Raphael, the first question for you is, how did you get started in menswear? I believe your background is in law, and you're an attorney, not a menswear aficionado, but yeah, you've developed into one of the foremost authorities on classic men's style. Yeah. Well, it's very true, actually. I, I grew up in Germany. My parents weren't interested in fashion, really. Mm -hmm. I had really horrible clothes as a kid, but eventually I really got interested in it because I found eBay, and it all started with a fountain pen. I bought a fountain pen okay. from Omas, and uh, I didn't really, I had heard of Mont Blanc, and I found that that was a good deal, and I thought, hey, that's cool, and then... I sold it again and made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so then I got into cufflinks. For me, it was great. I saw all the opportunity. I saw interesting things to do. And with cufflinks, you need a cufflink shirt. With a cufflink yeah. shirt, you need a suit. And that was when I was like 14, 15, mm -hmm. 16 years old. And how you could kind of express yourself through what you wore. Exactly. Yeah. So I, don't, I didn't have an outside influence. I didn't have a dad that dressed well. Yeah. I didn't have a mentor or an uncle or someone I looked up to. It was just gradually evolved by the things I found. Mm -hmm. But you went to law school, correct? That's, that's quite right. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was maybe partially because I thought, oh, you know, lawyers, they dress well and I liked it. I was thinking about becoming a tailor, but the mm -hmm. pay didn't seem... No, really it's not good. Great. And it was just seemed like a very difficult career. So I went into law and I, I realized, you know, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. You work long hours and I just felt drained and that that was not my path yeah. at all. And so when I came to the US, um, I married my wife mm -hmm. and I was waiting for a green card and with a work permit. Mm -hmm. And so for the first time in my life, I had time on my hands and I couldn't work. So I was like, hey, let's write something about men's clothing because mm -hmm. I felt like I had something to contribute. But uh, it's not just saying things, but doing things. Yeah. So I started the website as a hobby. And then, you know, after a little while, we had advertisers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a second. How can we make this work? And mm -hmm. at the time, you know, it was the economic crisis, yeah. 2010. Nobody was waiting to hire an inexperienced German yeah. uh, with strong opinions. Yes. Because, that you know, <laughs> nobody hired anyways, right? Yeah. So why would hire someone who has no workplace experience? Yeah, yeah. And so did you start Gentleman's Gazette in 2010? That's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so what, you know, now that we're seven years past that, what has kept you going the whole time? You know, what motivates you, you know, to create Gentleman's Gazette, to make it better than, you know, it was last year, and to create more content, unique content, to go from, you know, what's on your website to building an Instagram channel and then a YouTube channel yeah. and then you know who knows what will be next for you yeah I mean basically you no know, when I started it was a hobby and yeah. it's just my passion I love men's clothes and that's what I did and then I felt like I had to write every day and so I would do that and it was fun for a while but then I realized you know if you keep doing that chances are you you'll burn out yeah and I changed my, my focus a little bit I said mm -hmm. you know if I write something I want this to be the best piece about that subject on the internet. Yeah. That was kind of my, my standard. Because I like details, I like going in depth, I like yes. the, the quality, and so I wanted And you also love the reflected. history of it as well, and the tradition. Exactly, like where did we come historically, why did we wear it, how mm -hmm. can we do it today? Because as you know, I mean, today you can wear anything, right? I mean, yes, exactly. And then um, people started asking, oh, where do you get these wonderful gloves? And mm -hmm. I'd say, oh, I bought them at a flea market in Vienna, which is not helpful, you know, they yeah. couldn't get it. And that's when I had the idea in my head to say, why not create products? And mm -hmm. my wife wasn't really on board at first. Yeah. She was like, it's inventory and stuff. And I was like, no, we have to create our own brand so it's not on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And we can exactly do what we want. We have yeah. the patterns we want, the shapes we want, like bow the ties. The textures, the colors. Exactly, yeah. like black bow ties. It was so hard to find a black bow tie that looked like the 1930s one mm -hmm. in apparel arts or magazines. Yeah. And nobody made them that were, they were all adjustable, I wanted non-adjustable ones, so I made them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so it was all things that I couldn't find that had that attention to detail yeah. that I wanted with that 30s inspiration, yeah. but something that you could wear today. So that was a big step, of course, and yeah. then, you know, once you have that drive, you just want to keep going and yeah. do more. Because there's always more. Exactly. It's, yeah. there's, it's never enough, there's always more, and there's always a... You know, whether you're watching the Oscars and you see something that you know one of the celebrities is wearing, and, and that's a whole piece that you can write about right there. If he's wearing a velvet jacket, or maybe he has you know a, a type of weave in the, his 
black, you know, exactly. tie for black tie, for instance. Or if you dress is very poorly, you know, it's yeah. like a tuxedo with flat pockets and a notched lapel and yeah. three buttons. And you're like, you know, that's maybe fine for a suit, but evening wear is where it's different. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, that, that, you know, kept me going. And then I got to the point where it was just too much for myself. Mm -hmm. So I hired, I hired an assistant, you yeah. know, and then that helped, of course. And now we have a team of, of eight people, mm -hmm. you know, full time plus freelancers. And yeah. we also have things outsourced. And it's just a very exciting project to yeah. grow your own company, create your own core values, yeah. decide, you know, we're not gonna have people in here that just work the hours, yeah. but we, we measure them by outcomes and we want them to be happy and flexible. Yeah. And so that's the, the business part of it is great. I really enjoy yeah. it. But of course the clothes are always at the heart because I you know I design, we design our own fabrics, the mm -hmm. shapes, and as we grow our product portfolio, you just have that drive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what we're talking about. And so we're, you know, over the next couple of years, you know, we kind of talk about what you've been doing and kind of maybe where you're going to go. Where do you see menswear going in general? Whether it's, you know, the styles, the trends, also the type of content that's put out by, whether it's gentlemen like yourself or myself, or the content that's going to be put out by like the Esquires and the GQs. Yeah. Um, you know, in the next three to five years, where do you see menswear going? Well, you know, when, when I started, it was all about articles. Blogs mm -hmm. were relatively new still. People wrote content and had yes. pictures. I think now we see more video. And I think video is a great medium because unlike a podcast, it's visual. Yeah. And, and what we wear is, is visual. And yeah. I can describe a lapel in a thousand words or I can just show it in one and picture. explain it in 30 seconds. Yeah. And it's, it's much easier for people to comprehend. Yes. So... If you look at that, I think one big thing will be video and that will be stronger because it's very easy to create a, a nice picture and mm -hmm. Instagram is big. It's much harder to create a nice video, yeah. especially consistently. And I also think that more brands will engage in educating customers, which is something that we always had. We started yeah. with educating You started people. with that where they're starting with the product and going to the education, exactly. where you started with the education and exactly. going to the product. Exactly, but we will always be educating and we'll just add more products to Fort Belvedere because we, we talked to our customers and they said, hey, you know, we'd like to buy more from you. And I have these ideas and, and we're very true to our core values. So yeah. you won't see things that are not quality. You won't see things for women. You yeah. won't see fashionable things. You will see what you have grown to know from the Gentleman's Gazette yes. and Fort Belvedere. And that's our niche. And we're not going to leave that and all yeah. of a sudden start offering flip flops yeah. and printed T-shirts. Yeah. You don't want to wear pastel printed flint flops? That's not your style? <laughs> not quite, no. no. <laughs> um, so on that topic, um, I'm very curious, are there any things that you don't wear? Do you not wear blue jeans? Do you not wear bathing suits? Do you not wear tank tops? And on the flip side of that, what are your favorite items to wear? Or do you have a single item in your wardrobe that I'm sure is quite extensive that is your absolute favorite item, whether it's a bow tie, a shirt, a pair of shoes, yeah. you know, a pocket square? Okay, so... Um, let's start with the things I don't wear. Okay. I do not wear hoodies. I don't own a single hoodie. I don't wear sweatpants. Yeah. I don't have sweatpants. Even in your own home, you don't wear them. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I don't own a pair of sweatpants. Okay. You know, I have a pair of like corduroy pants, and yeah. I find them soft and warm. And it changes in the winter. Yeah. You can wear these things in the summer. I wear more like a light seersucker, maybe, or something. Yes. Like today, you're wearing seersucker. Exactly. We're, we're both wearing seersucker. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's a nice warm weather fabric. Mm -hmm. And overall, when it gets very casual, I don't have that. In the winter, you know, at home I have like a, a dressing gown mm -hmm. or a TV jacket. So when my neighbors come over and see me, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, wow, you know, yeah. they don't expect that. Yeah. But that's like, I, I like that. Yeah. And so I wear t-shirts to the gym. You okay. know, I wear workout shorts to the gym. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. Okay. I'm not a t-shirt guy outside of that. I wear a polo shirt if I want to go yeah. casual. Or I wear dress shirts. Okay. Um, favorite things. I think it, it sometimes changes a bit when you have new items yeah especially if you've designed those items because they're all your favorite exactly yeah. exactly and Fort Belvedere has some beautiful stuff exactly and I think I like to create unique combinations mm -hmm. it's kind of a personal goal to never wear the exact same combination twice yeah will it does it mean I wear the same pants and jacket yes but the pocket squares may be different or the yeah. shirt or both of them yeah so that's that's definitely a part um, if I would have to say that the ones that I wear the most they're probably the classics mm -hmm. right for example I went on a trip um, around the world for 105 days mm -hmm. and I had a suitcase so what I brought was 
this jacket mm -hmm. and a navy blue double-breasted suit okay. that was lightweight and that I could wear in many different ways because yeah. I could take the suit, you know, wear just the pants. Separate the pants and the jacket. Exactly, yeah. wear just the jacket. So when it comes down, that would probably be a favorite item because yeah. I can get a lot of use out of it and wear it a lot. Yeah. Something like this jacket or what you're wearing, you know, it's a little more different and it stands yeah. out, yet you can combine it with lots of things. Yeah. Whereas a suit or a combination. And so I, I like those things. things. Exactly. Yeah. I find that jackets like what you and I are wearing is more of like a secondary jacket. Whereas a, a navy double-breasted suit or a blazer is your kind of your primary jacket. Yeah, I mean, it depends on you, right? If you if you want to apply at an accounting firm yeah. or at a law firm, this is not your interview attire, no. right? No, not at all. If you're an artist, why not? Yeah, yeah, or you work for yourself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, of course, if you work for yourself, you just wear whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, going back to your readers, my perception is that you're focused on formal tailored clothing usually with a more vintage flair. Um, what is the value that you think you provide to your readers? You know, when they come to your site, you know, what are they looking for or what are you trying to provide them with? I know obviously yeah. a big part of that is education, mm -hmm. whether it's how to tie a bow tie or you know, the history and how to wear you know, Shetland tweed. Yeah. Um, what, what do you view kind of your value as or the difference in your content versus um, any number of other menswear outlets? I think a strong suit of ours is that we go very deep. Yeah. You know, we try to do a proper research about a topic mm -hmm. and try to understand why things are the way they are. And then sometimes we come up with interesting nuggets. For example, yeah. we were just working on something about cashmere and cashmere goats. Mm -hmm. And we learned that worldwide, deserts are growing because of cashmere goats. Yeah, because they just now, raise the land and... Exactly. Yeah. And traditionally... It's not sustainable. Yeah, traditionally those those... Those sellers or the people who would raise the goats had camels, mm -hmm. and the camels had large paws that would not disrupt the roots. Mm -hmm. Versus the cashmere goats pull the roots out, yeah. and so the desert spreads. You know that's super interesting, and yeah. we also add that historic aspect that people really like about us. Yeah, and it's very practical. And with the videos, you can really show people what you're talking about. Yeah, for example, you know um, when you read about sleeve length, right? Mm -hmm. Most people say, oh, show like half an inch, show a full inch, yeah. show a quarter inch. Well, we go a step or two above that. We tell people, you know, there's also the difference between here and there. You have very wide sleeves yeah. and very slim things. There is a, a correlation between your armhole size of your yeah. shirt and your jacket. And so we just always try to really, you know, dig deep yeah. and, and explain to people why things are in a certain yeah. way. Because a lot of, I think, the fit of, of whether it's a suit, a shirt, those things separate or together, it's all connected. The width of the collar, you know, like you said, the armhole height, you know, how wide is, is the sleeve, how wide is the cuff of your shirt. And it can all frame any number of parts of your body. Exactly. To, to create the whole of, you know, the look that you want to you know, portrayer that you want for yourself. And they also work together. Like if you have a shirt with a deep armhole and you wear with a jacket with a deep armhole, the sleeve length may be right. Yeah. Now you switch to a jacket with you tiny armholes, bring the sleeve all up. of a sudden it brings the sleeve up and it's too yeah. short, right? And so people don't understand, oh, what's what's happening yeah. here, right? And, and so it's it's about the explanation. And sometimes people are overloaded, <clears throat> but the, the regular readers, they really appreciate yeah. that about us. Yeah, 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 very good. Um, so I have a couple more questions. The first one is, and, and perhaps some of my readers are interested in starting your own business. What were the big struggles that you had? What are the struggles now? And, and what messages would, or message would you pass along to the people who, whether they are interested in starting a product business, a blog, a website, um, or, or really anything, a creative agency, mm -hmm. that you think they could apply to any business? Okay. Well, first of all, I think it's a really great help and almost essential that you're into what you're doing. Yeah, passion it, and love. If you don't have the passion, it'll show eventually. Yeah. You lose the drive, you'll, you'll lose the grit. And especially as a startup, that's what you need. Because yeah. without it, you're unlikely to succeed. Um, you can either bootstrap your company the way yeah. we did it. We started with $300, mm -hmm. you know, and we created the content. If we had money earlier on, we could have probably produce products earlier on and, mm -hmm. and then grow, grow faster. But yes. everything has its, its benefits. You know, this way we grew solidly and reliably. I think when you start a business, it's good to have a plan mm -hmm. in mind and to talk to others who have already been in that situation. Because you might think that you know a lot, but in fact, there are lots of opportunities for mistakes. Mm -hmm. And having talked to someone who has gone through that same process, you can just save yourself a lot of money and time. Yeah. The other thing, and I think it's, it's very important to have, is, is that you're goal-driven. You're like, what is my goal? Where do I want to be? Mm -hmm. And then measure 
where you are yeah. and ask yourself, <clears throat> what did I do today to reach this goal? Yeah. So having that scorecard is, I think, essential to grow. Yeah. And, and then you can track your growth over exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. And it's also when you start, you know, it's, it's, it's like you, you're everything. You have everything, you yes. have all the knowledge, you do everything, and that works up until a certain point. Then you have to let go of some of it. Exactly. Yeah. And you need to kind of take the information that is in your head and put it on a paper so others can help you. Because yeah. ultimately, it will only get you so far, yeah. right? And that's, for me, the first thing to outsource was accounting. I yeah. sucked at it. I was bad. And by the time I hired my accountant, I had him do my entire books again. Yeah. So I should have just done, done, it done that beginning. from the beginning. Yeah. But I thought, oh, you know, I can't afford it. You can and save so money. Accounts are so expensive. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just understanding what your strengths are and yeah. what your weaknesses are, and then try to hone in on those strengths. Yeah. And I, and find someone who can help you with the other yeah. things. As a former accountant, I think that's a great decision. Accounting, got out of it for a reason. It is boring, and if you like men's, where you probably don't like accounting. Exactly. <laughs> it's just uh, not a good alignment there. Yeah. Yeah. So the last question, and it's kind of a two-part question. Or what is the most common question that you get from your readers? And what question do you wish you got more? Or that you have, maybe you haven't gotten a question, but you think it'd be a great question. Um, you know, for the people out there who are watching this, who, you know, are, are curious, you know, you know, A, what do you get asked? And, and B, you know, what don't you get asked that you feel like you should get asked? Yeah, I think we get a lot of questions that are about individual style. Mm -hmm. So people sending questions asking, hey, can I wear the blue blazer with a brown pair of pants? Yeah. So they're very individualized questions, yeah. but what they forget to... to There's a lot more it, to it than just hey, the items of clothing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So they forget to tell me what their skin tone is, yeah. what their hair color is, what their eye color is, what the purpose of the event mm -hmm. is that they're going to. And unfortunately, we are at a certain size now where we get so many questions that it's very hard to answer each one yeah. individually simply because we have to take out all the time from our day yeah. to create content and just uh, reply to people individually. And, yeah. You know, and if we get a nice video and an article, we can reach hundreds of thousands of readers who yeah. benefit from that knowledge. And so usually what we do is when we recognize what's in there, we guide people to the right article. Because yeah. most of the time, things are already there. Yeah. People just, just didn't search for it, it. They haven't found yeah. it. And so that's... That's the thing I would say. Individual, personalized style questions yeah. are the number one questions. Yeah. Um, questions that I think they should be asking. Yeah. Um, yeah, hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, or maybe not what they should be asking, but what you, maybe a question that you've always thought would be a good question, you just haven't gotten asked it. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I couldn't come up with something. The other thing that we get yeah. asked a lot is is about certain brands. People do you like, like this brand? Do you recommend them? Have you do you have experience exactly, with them? Exactly. And and yeah. the, the problem with that is that you know brands can change their output. Yeah. Let's say it's a smaller brand and they start small and they do one thing. Mm -hmm. Well, two years later they've grown. They have different producers. Yeah. Totally so different the product, product, different exactly. fit, different the, quality of fabric. The, the, the product that yeah. I used to test under that label may have changed entirely. And it's particularly true for startups, but even for bigger companies sometimes. Yeah. So people like the easy way. Yeah. But it's much better to understand what quality is yes. and how you recognize it. So at any given point in time, you are your own master and yeah. you don't have to rely basically. And that's kind of our take. We don't just want to say, hey, go buy this kind of suit from Ralph Lauren. Yeah. No, 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 go look at the garment because maybe the, the Ralph Lauren suit from the 1980s is really awesome. Yeah. The ones from the 2000s is not. And the one in the store, maybe it's even a fake. Who knows, yeah. right? So it's, it's up to you to, to do that. Yeah. And um, I think that's a question that I rarely get asked. Yeah. People rarely have these kind of questions where they want to understand the full picture. Yeah. Um, they want a quick answer. And Exactly. Yeah. And it's unfortunately like most good things in life, you it's not always just it. a super easy way yeah. that, you, that gets you right there. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. Well, Raphael, thank you for being here today on The Fine Young Gentleman. For Absolutely. Those good luck, man. Out there watching, thank you for watching. Again, this is Raphael from Gentleman's Gazette. I'm Justin Jebbers from The Fine Young Gentleman. And a big thank you to AJ from the Art of Charm for hosting us here out in beautiful Los Angeles.